Okay, so let's see some examples of working with strings in C. So in this video, we'll focus more on using arrays to hold our C strings. We'll see some examples later in the semester of working with pointers to strings. So C doesn't have a specific string type. Instead, we create character arrays that have a null at the end of them. So string literals have an implicit null at the end. So while this looks like it's a five character string, there's actually six characters because there's a null at the end. And you'll notice in Visual Studio Code, if I hover over that, it'll tell me that this is a char six because even though I didn't specify a size, I initialized it with six characters. The five characters of the word hello plus the null terminator since I used a string literal. So this is a string. It's a null terminated character array. Now the second variable, I'll initialize with some characters. Now, even though these are all characters and this is a character array, this is not a string. It's actually a character array, but not a string because there's no null terminator. Now I can still use an array initializer to create a string. I just have to have a null character as the last character in that initializer. And finally, let's create a longer string so that we can do some stuff with that later in this example. And asking if it's too long is a joke. It's certainly not true. We can have strings that are much larger than this. So I'm going to do some loops here, and I'm going to go ahead and declare a loop variable. I'll use this in some different loops later in the video. So to print these out, I'm going to use percent %s as the control sequence for printf. Then I'm also going to print their size. Actually, let me do the size first. And that's going to be an unsigned long. And then I'll add size of string one and then the actual variable name itself. And I'll go ahead and repeat this for each of the remaining variables. And now we have something that we can actually try to run. So I'll compile. I get a warning for an unused variable. That's fine because I knew I wasn't going to use that. And so it looks like I forgot my new lines here. So let's rebuild this and run it again. And so you can see string one is size six, string two is size five, string three is size four, and string four is size 47. Now all of these probably make sense. Again, for String one and string two, there's a null at the end, so there's more being displayed. Actually, for string four, that's true as well. We're displaying one fewer character than the size because the null character doesn't get displayed. But you'll notice that even though string one is of size five, when I print it as a string, it says world hello. Now, it may be different on your machine. This is a very implementation-specific detail, what system you're running on, the compiler used, and so forth. But essentially, what's going on in memory is I have WORLD stored for S2. And then immediately thereafter, string one is stored H-E-L-L-O. Now in memory, I have something that looks like this. The actual order just depends. This is, I think, what my program is going to do. We have string two stored in these five bytes, and then string one is stored in these five bytes, and you can see that there's an null terminator. Well, when I say print this string, C doesn't check to see, is this a valid string? It says, oh, this must be a valid string, so I'm going to print it all the way until I get to a null terminator. So one thing to be very careful of when you're working with strings in C is make sure that you always have enough room in your character array for the string that you want to store there plus the null character. And I'll print out the null terminator character just so you can see what it looks like in output. And I'll actually just print the, char the null character like this. And so when I run this, you'll notice when you actually print out the null character, nothing happens. So even though there's a character here, it's null, so nothing gets printed there. And again, I forgot my new line at the end. And I'll add a blank line as we do more examples with strings in this video. Now I can print the characters of a string one by one. So I'll initialize my loop counter to, to zero and then I'll print this character by character. And you may think, well, I know I need to 
check to see is ii less than some value, but actually, and certainly I could use a for loop here, but since this is a string or it should be a string, I don't actually have to do a counter. I can just say, is the current index holding a null? And if it is, then I'm done. So I'll use that as my loop condition. And I'll print that one character at a time. And I'll actually put a space in there just so I can see that I'm doing something a little bit differently. I'm not just printing the string. And I'll print index ii of string 1. So let's compile that and run. And I have an error because that should be string 1. And when I run, I get an infinite loop because I didn't increment ii. So now let's compile that now and run. And you can see it prints those things out. So let me grab that new line just so that it goes to another line. Now, let me grab what I did before. But now let's print string 3. But let's do all the values character by character. So let's change this. We'll say string 3. Whoops. We definitely want to print string 3 here and not string 1. So that's the kind of copy and paste problems that can get you in trouble. So string of some index is some character. And then we'll also say that the ASCII value, and we'll do decimal, octal, and hex. And let's indent this a little bit just to make it stand out. So we'll do for this value here, I want to actually print the index. And then I'm going to do string 3 ii several times. I believe I need 4. I don't know why I didn't get ii there. So let me clean this up a little bit. And I think that should get everything. So just to make sure that we're not, uh, I don't quite have 80 columns here. So let me make this a little wider. But that's still a little bit wide. And so I'll go ahead and put that down here just to keep things in a narrow column. So let's see what we get when we compile this. And again, instead of just printing the actual characters, I'm printing the character four times. Once is a char, once is a decimal, once is an octal, and once is a hexadecimal. And let me change that to a capital X there because that gives me the hex values in capital letters. So I compile and run, and you can see that for string three, which is E and D, we have a bit of a new line problem. So let me fix that. And so you can see E and D, and there's the associated ASCII values. To make this a little more interesting, let's make this a capital E. And let's also add one other character. So let's add a period. We have a little bit of punctuation here. So now we have a little bit longer of a, of a string, but that punctuation and the capital letter will actually see some interesting things with the ASCII values. You'll notice that those change quite dramatically. N and D are fairly close together, but then there's quite a bit of difference between capital E and lowercase n, and then from the period to any of those. And that's just because if you go to an ASCII table, you can see what's there. In fact, you can actually print an ASCII table fairly easily using C just by taking a char and incrementing it and then seeing what values you get. The only thing is, is that some things that are valid characters on the ASCII table are unprintable. So let's uh, change our formatting here so that it's a little bit neater. I'll put a colon and then we'll print each of these in a, I think, yeah, we're going to need to do a four character column. And I also think we should do a printf before our null. Or we'll put it at the end of this because I think that's the best way to do it. It's sort of like saying, hey, I'm going to skip a line here. So I've saved this. And when I run this, yeah, that looks a lot neater. So the same stuff I've done before, but just a little bit neater. So just as a side note, one kind of interesting thing you could do is backspace is a, ASCII at, a valid ASCII character. And so sometimes the reason I put it to the space here is because there's actually going to be an extra space right here. If I tried to do a dash, I would have a dash here, 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 and here, which would be great, but I would have one here, which would look weird. But what you can actually do is once you get out of the loop, you can print a backspace character and it'll actually clear that output. It sometimes gets a little tricky to understand what that code's supposed to do, so make sure if you do something like that, you comment it. And in general, it's best just to plan ahead so that you can avoid that if at all possible. Let's have some fun with string four. So we'll print that out just so we remember what it is. And then 
I'm going to change character 29 to be a null terminator, and I'm going to print it out again. So let's see what happens there. So notice I don't print the whole thing. This is a really long string, maybe too long, but then I set character 29 to a null, and now it just says this. Again, think about how C works. The size of string 4 never changes. Now you may think, wow, that's kind of hard to believe, but in fact, that is the case here. So let's see what's going on here behind the scenes. Now here I'm going to use a for loop. And probably size of string 4 will be sufficient. However, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to divide that by the size of char, just so that I make sure I get the right number of bytes in case I'm on some machine where char is more than one byte. And I'll increment ii at the end. And what I'll do, in fact, let me take this line of code right here. And what I'll do is I'll printf a single character in brackets. And that will be string four of ii. So when I print this out, I have all sorts of problems. My 31. I must have accidentally copied and pasted that there somehow, but that seems to have cleared up a lot of those errors. Yeah. And so now when I run this, you'll see this looks okay, but you'll notice maybe too long is still in there. So even though when I print it out, it doesn't print maybe too long, those characters are still in the array. But you'll notice this character right here, notice there's no space. These are two brackets adjacent to each other, very similar to what we saw up here with the null character. Since that null character was there, that's the end of the string, no matter what. It doesn't care that there's additional characters at the end, because the way the string is determined, it goes from the first character in the array to the next null in memory. Not just in the array. If your array doesn't have a null, you have an invalid string, and it's going to keep working outside of your array until it finds something. So you'll sometimes see weird output in your code. Almost always, that's the result of having issues with your string. So at this point, we'll stop with this example. There'll be other examples. Especially important is when we get to a later module on pointers, you'll want to see how we use pointers to work with strings because it's a little bit different. With an array, we're actually allocating that memory. With pointers, we don't have memory for the string, so we have to do some other work. But for now, I think that'll be a, a good start with strings in C. And before we end this video, I do want to show you an example of how the compiler makes a difference in the operating system. So the previous example we did on SIGWIN. Now using Ubuntu, the order of the strings in memory is different. So if you all recall, we had string one and string two, and when we printed string two, we got world hello because string one showed up after string one in memory. Now with Ubuntu, notice here we say hello and then world end. So string two prints world end and end is from string three. So what this looks like is this. Again, the two strings are together in memory and we have world end and then the null terminator because it can remember when you print a string, it's assuming that you're going to give it the start of an actual valid C string meaning it's going to print from that starting character until it gets to a null terminator. Now, it's also possible that in memory, you would see something like this. And so in a case like this, it didn't actually use these extra bytes. So you're at the mercy of whatever exists here. This may be garbage, or if you're lucky, it may be a zero and it will end the string. When we're doing some of these not ideal examples in memory, just keep in mind that your results may be different from what you see me do and even when I do it, it just depends on which operating system I'm working in at that time.